Hey guys, it's Drek, and I've been using a GoPro and I've played with a GoPro session and so I think that I'm reasonably qualified as somebody who uses POV cameras including this one a lot to, uh, to do a review of this. So a company that makes this camera reached out and wanted a video review made of it and I figured that I would oblige them. So this is their top line model. I guess it's comparable to like the GoPro Hero 4 Black in that it shoots in 4K video and has a decent camera and then it's it's water resistant as long as it's in its case what have you so it's also app networked but uh, one thing that I think is interesting is like the new GoPros it has a screen built into it which might make it better for vlogging I don't know you guys give me your opinion so included are various kinds of mounts which look to be GoPro compatible which is awesome since this is clearly competing with that the spec sheet tells us that it's got a built-in gyro stabilizer which is kind of nonsense two inch screen uh, shoots an mp4 will allow you to do various versions of slow-mo and then of course your editing software can take those down even further where does it show the video quality that's uh, 4k at 24 um, frames per second and then it will do 2k at 30 and then of course 1080p at 60 which is my favorite way to film because I really like how you can get some some really sweet slow-mo it's very good for action footage so I've unboxed a few GoPros and this so far seems pretty similar it's not attached to its mount which is excellent let's go ahead and get the camera itself out of here. so i figured out how to get it out of the housing and you do need a wedge which is crazy it's that uh tight onto here so you slide this over and then put something underneath so that you can pop this open so it's a dual stage lock similar to a mason jar a lot more case than it needs, I would say, but maybe that's just a design choice. And then once you have it out, it's the size of a GoPro, but with a screen built in, looks like there isn't a cover for this, so you do really wanna use this camera inside its case more often than not. Here's a lens cover, looks like Wi-Fi capable. One, two, three, four, five uh, buttons to control this with, and then I don't believe that this is a touch screen, so that's all you get. But it wouldn't be a good camera review if we didn't get some footage with it. So we're going to go ahead and turn the tables, flip the script, uh, power this guy on, see how easy it is to use, and then get some actual footage with it because who cares if it doesn't work very well. Is this is our battery compartment down here. They really like these interesting uh, door type things. Hey! Super similar, does that remind you of anything? So I, I hate to keep comparing it to GoPro, but when there's a, a market leader, you kinda have to, but uh, the battery seems like it would be just as easy to, to swap on the go if you had extras as a GoPro as it is not integrated. Some of these uh, cheaper, or I don't wanna say knockoff, but less expensive uh, sport cams that ship similar to this have integrated batteries, and that's one thing that I don't like. So this one has the similar technology to the GoPro is awesome. Awesome. I'm going to have to take it out again, aren't I? <laughs> so I wanted to do a little bit of talking about the SJ Cam while it's kind of getting its own footage and then we'll take a look at some of that footage. But out of the package, charged up, the SJ Cam 5000 is pretty sweet. Its user interface is intuitive. Those extra buttons are definitely very, very helpful. The ability to tap this mode button and hop into here and then do things like change the setup as well as review your footage is pretty sweet. You've got a lot of different options in here. I don't ever really use my camera as a direct output, but it's got photo lapse. It's got the ability to do a video lapse. It's got a lot of different fun modes here in the setup. Now, some of these are super duper intuitive, like it'll let you put a watermark onto your footage while you're filming. It also lets you do like an underwater mode, a dash cam mode. So depending upon what you want to use this for, it has automatic settings for that, which I think is really, really cool. Now, what I like more than anything else is somebody who's kind of like a point and click uh, video user is that the resolution options are super duper simple and we can do everything from the, the super duper low quality to 720 in various flavors including 120 fps as well as 1080p at 60 fps the 120 is just going to be really smooth i bet and it's a 4k camera which means that this is comparable to the the hero 4 black by gopro and i think that that's the primary selling point here is that this is as nice as the hero 4 black at about a little under half the cost so that's pretty crazy but i want to try a few different things so we're gonna 
lock into that resolution. We're gonna hop out of this and then we'll come over, go into video mode, and then it's going to need an SD card, but then we'll, we'll film something pretty neat, I think. I, I like that it's got an active clock running even though it's not recording, that's sort of cool. So we're recording right now in 120 FPS. Here's like full on camera reception, but we'll see kind of how this captures a shot from an alpha trooper and then we'll slow that down later. And then I'm going to, to get some more footage with it in various other things and I'll share those with you. But I want to get a few different samplings of its video quality to, to put all together. A shot from an alpha trooper and then we'll slow that down later. So of course we had to try the 4K, right? Like, how do you beat this? So the footage is obviously quality, and I don't need to speak any more about that, but I did want to talk briefly about the camera as compared to my usual action camera. And of course, this is the top of the line for the SJ Cam series at the moment, and this is about a, a year or a year and a half old at this point. But this is my Hero 3 Plus. It's what I use. I don't have a Hero Black to, to share with you. So inside the cases, it's obvious that the SJ Cam is a little bit bulkier. And that's just how it's got to be. The GoPro case also is a lot uh, narrower. Like the plastic is, is at least like thinner or more compact. It's not bowing out as much to accommodate certain parts of the casing. And it doesn't have this huge, like I guess, screwed on lens plate. It's kind of molded into the, the casing itself. So it gets more interesting when they come out of the case because that is... I guess how I would want to use the SJ cam particularly for vlogging so let's go ahead and pop this case both cases are waterproof the GoPro currently has its non waterproof door on the back but the GoPro is easier to get out of its case that's either a pro or a con depending upon kind of who you are how you intend to use it and then the SJ cam is not a lot of this has to do with the fact that the SJ cam is just offset by these plastic stents inside both have easily accessible waterproof button housings but the SJ cam has a lot more buttons and therefore has a lot more buttons on its housing so whereas they both have top and front it has three on the side whereas the GoPro only has one so when you look at them side by side the GoPro and the SJ cam are marginally uh, different in size uh, roughly the same thickness the GoPro is a little bit thinner and then roughly the same depth where the GoPro is a little bit thinner and this is a theme as you can tell uh, roughly the same length where the GoPro is again a little bit thinner now I think that that's just a sacrifice that had to be made to make something that shoots better in this case specifically but shoots at a comparable level in a compact package and cost half as much. I just don't think that they had the time to do like the aluminum faceplate and, and such. That said, this does have a screen on it, whereas my model of GoPro does not have a screen. Uh, this doesn't have a cover, which really drives me crazy. As you well know, the GoPro models have covers for their kind of proprietary hookups. Now, both have battery uhs, battery uhs, batteries that are removable. I know you can attach a screen to the GoPro, that's what this port, of course, is for. But the GoPro's battery comes out of the back here, and the SJ Cams comes out through here. Now, the overall interface of this particular model of SJ Cam is just frankly much nicer, whereas on the SJ Cam, you get this to work with, on the GoPro, you get this now both are satisfactory for me in particular it's not a huge deal using one over the other especially since i'm very familiarized with the gopro's platform but i mean this is a viewfinder 
how do you how do you beat that like that's something that the gopro especially in this model does not have and this has it built right in so the the specs are comparable for the things that it'll shoot this is a much nicer camera just as a standalone but the gopro is a little bit smaller as far as the durability goes i've never thrown either one of these off of a rock face so i'm not going to pretend that i'm an expert in a field that i am not but the SJ Cam is doing everything that I've asked of it, and it's doing a pretty good job. So I I really have no complaints about it, and it comes with a plethora of accessories that are comparable to those that the GoPro line offers. GoPro will, in fact, fit into this case, but I don't think that you'll be able to reach any of the buttons. I do think that that's a little funny, though, that you could, in theory... Uh, hot swap them this will not work the other way as the gopro is smaller but that's my overall review and i guess like since i'm an amateur video maker on youtube all i can do is give you my educated opinion as that but as somebody who uses cameras to make youtube videos and occasionally post things to facebook and instagram like this is a really nice action camera for about like two hundred dollars ish depending upon where you find it and Frankly, it makes me wonder why I ever bought a GoPro, and it kind of explains why GoPro's stock is plummeting, because clearly, like, what they're doing is no longer unique, and they can be outdone in certain facets, so I... Hats off to SJ Cam. You've designed an excellent product. I really appreciate you sending me one out to, to make this review, and... That's uh that's the video, but SJ Cam doing great things at a reasonable price, and GoPro doing also very great things, but much more expensive. And I'm starting to wonder if I didn't pay for a brand name when I got this for Christmas.